section 5.5, we're learning about finding the real zeros of a polynomial function. We have a couple of theorems we need to understand first. Um, I can actually, I have a handout that I've used in the past with this, and I might actually scan in this handout or maybe put a blank one online that we can use. So we have several theorems that are involved in this section. There's this thing called the remainder theorem. No, I just spelled that wrong. Remainder theorem. Okay, it says if f of x is divided by x minus c, then the remainder is the function, the value of the function at the x value c. So there are two different ways, in other words, there are two different ways to find a remainder. One way to find a remainder is by using synthetic division. Another way of finding a remainder is to actually plug the number in that you're dividing by. Okay, so for example, if I'm, if I am using the polynomial function 4x cubed minus 3x squared minus 8x plus 4, and we're dividing that by x minus 2, I can of course just do synthetic division, so negative 3, negative 8, 4, bring down the 4, 4 times 2 is 8, negative 3 plus 8 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, negative 8 plus 10 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, the remainder is 8, right? Find the remainder, okay? So now what the remainder theorem is saying is that the remainder 8 should also be able to be found by taking f of x and finding the value of the function at 2. So instead of doing synthetic division, we take the 2 and we plug it into our function, which would be 4, 2 cubed, minus 3 times 2 squared, minus 8 times 2 plus 4. So 2 cubed is 8, times 4 is 32. 2 squared is 4, times 3 is negative 12. 8 times 2 is 16. Combine like terms, well, just add and subtract the numbers. 32 minus 12 is 20, minus 16 is 4, and 4 plus 4 is 8. We got the same answer. So how would this particular theorem be useful? Well, if you needed to evaluate a function at a number, sometimes this can be a little cumbersome to plug the number in, cube it, square it, especially if your powers are even higher than that, and then add and subtract your numbers. Often you might go reaching for your calculator on something like this. But if you realize instead, because of this theorem, that you can plug the number in using synthetic division instead and get the same exact answer, this is frequently easier. The bottom line is you can do it either way and the only thing we're worrying about with learning this theorem is that both ways work to get that same answer. All right, the next theorem we're going to learn about, we've kind of already talked about with synthetic division and that is the factor theorem. The factor theorem says x minus c is a factor of f of x if f of c equals zero. Well, based on the theorem we just learned that says synthetic division remainder and plugging in a number get the same answer, well, if a, if a binomial is a factor, then the remainder will be zero because it divides in evenly. So if you take that number and you plug it into the function itself, your answer should be zero you're plugging in an x value, you're getting out a y value of zero. 
that means that that answer is an x-intercept. Or not the answer, the answer is zero, but the number you're plugging in is an x-intercept because that's where the y-value is zero. So this is something we have already been using that um, if c is an x-intercept, then x minus c is a factor. I'm not going to, I'm going to go ahead and e skip doing an example on that one because it's just a matter of the factor theorem and the fact that c is an x-intercept go hand in hand. Okay. I'm going to stop the video at this point and do a different one for this next theorem.